I took CS50 last year and it changed my life. This course is good for two types of people. The first, people who are students who maybe are going to college now and they wanna get a head start into learning the fundamentals of computer science so that when they get to college, they're better prepared for their classes. And the second group of people is people who are looking to grow professionally and change maybe their career path and learn how to code and get a job. People who are maybe older, like me, I was like this last year. I took CS50 and eventually I was able to get hired just after taking CS50. So if you're looking for a course that's gonna teach you the fundamentals of computer science in a correct sequence without getting you stuck in tutorial hell, without starting one thing and not finishing and then going to another language and not finishing. If you wanna learn the fundamentals from the ground up, literally from how does a computer store data all the way to like, how do you make a full stack application? Take CS50. It's the best investment that you can make for yourself in 2023. This course teaches you how to code, meaning it's not necessarily teaching you everything you need to know about JavaScript or everything you need to know about Python. Rather, it teaches you how to think like a computer scientist. So it teaches you how to use logic, how to use basic math, how to think smart, how to write code that works. And these are all skills that you could really transfer across different languages. Many languages have, you know, concepts of a loop and a variable and conditionals, et cetera, et cetera, right? And data structures and algorithms. These are concepts that exist in most languages, if not all. And so CS50 really empowers you to understand what these main concepts are. And it also teaches you, how can I transfer these skills to another language that maybe I haven't learned about? And I've seen in my own job now that concepts such as regular expressions, which the course touches upon a little bit, I was able to pretty much transfer that knowledge over to my current job into using very advanced Excel functions. Now, do they teach Excel in the course? No, they don't. But because I knew about regular expressions, I went and I looked up the documentation for Excel and transfer over those concepts to basically a new language that I didn't learn about in the course. But the course teaches you how to do that. They teach you how to go into doc documentation and they teach you how to help yourself figure things out. And this is the main benefit of the CS50 method. You learn by doing rather than just by watching a video and learning the theory. The theory is great. The lectures are great. I honestly had to watch some of the lectures a few times to really understand the concepts. But the real learning happened when I was stuck on code that was not working. And I had to go all over the internet and figure out where is the bug? Why is my code no, not working? And that just shows that if you really want to learn, you have to put in the work. You have to debug. You have to get stuck with problems and you have to figure out how to get out of the, those problems. That's where the real learning happens. And it's not just that you just learned the concept and now you know it very well. No, it actually, it's like ingrained in you now. So even though I took the course about six months ago, most of the concepts, I know them, I still know them very well, and I'm able to use them day to day. The course is a big investment in terms of time. Obviously it's free to take, so that's, uh, that's pretty good, but it does take a fair amount of time. When I was taking the course, I would watch the lecture the first time on regular speed, and then the second time I would watch it on a 1.5 speed. It's a chunk of time, it's a big chunk of time, it's a big commitment. And you should be aware of that, that you know if you're gonna take the course, you should take it seriously. So to me, from the beginning, even though I was taking the course seriously, I knew that it's not a sprint, it's rather a marathon. And I really set for myself to only learn for two hours per day because I was still juggling a job and family, etc. So by doing that, I kind of kept myself from getting burnt out and I kept that enthusiasm alive. That's how I managed to get through the course. I didn't actually do the, I think the, cor the course, if you do it according to their schedule, it should only take about 10, 11 weeks. I didn't have that luxury, so it took me a lot longer. And something I would recommend for everyone taking the course is to really make a part of your life. Don't just, you know, work on it, work on it, work on it, and then all of a sudden you forget about it, and then you get a couple of days that you don't work on it, and then eventually you just drop out. Don't do it, really try to make it part of your life. I, that's, you know, when I was taking the course, I made it part of my life. I, I have a small computer, I take it with me everywhere I go. I would go camping. Sometimes I would take myself out just to the forest and go coding there for the two hours and just really try to like make it fresh every day. Week zero, Scratch. Scratch is a graphical programming language, so you'll learn all the basic coding concepts such as loops, variables, conditionals. Instead of having to learn all the syntax associated with all the typical programming language, instead you'll do it via a graphical interface. The homework for this week should be fairly easy, and guys, just do the minimum required in order to pass the homework. Don't come now and create a crazy app. No, that's not what you need to do. You just need to fulfill the minimum requirements, read them well, read them twice, and move on to the next week. Week one, 
C. C is an awesome programming language. It's mainly used in embedded applications. The course covers most of C actually. And this week's homework is fairly straightforward. A little hint, just do a loop within a loop. Week two, arrays. Arrays are a very essential data structure. And so in the homework this week, you learn how to iterate between arrays. Week three, algorithms. You're gonna learn, you're gonna go deeper into C and how to create your own algorithms. The homework is very cool. Actually, this week has, in my opinion, the hardest homework of the entire course. Tide Man, I ended up spending a lot of time trying to figure it out. In the end, I did not figure it out. And I ended up submitting Runoff, which was the easier version that they let you submit for the week. Week four, memory. Here you learn how to use pointers. Very essential in C, in the C language. Where is the data stored? How do you point to that data? How do you retrieve that data? Week five, data structures. This week you learn how to make your own struts, which will be very helpful for when you start programming in Python because there is a similarity between struts and classes. Six, Python. To me, this was the week I was looking forward the most. I have heard so much about Python over the last couple of years. When I took the course, the homework was a bit much for me. So I actually ended up taking CS50's Python course. So I got probably around halfway through over there, and then I was able to complete the Python section of the CS50. It was around at this point in the course where I decided to start applying for jobs. I felt like I was really becoming a computer scientist. I started to feel comfortable talking to people about it and explain to them concepts that I didn't even know existed a couple of weeks ago. So when you take the course, when you get to Python, remember, it's time to start putting a CV together, start sending it out, apply for jobs. Week seven, SQL. I don't think SQL is a programming language per se. It's more of a way to store data in databases and you then write Python code in order to manipulate that data. So what you really learn in this week is how to use the database, what the commands are to input data, output data. Week eight, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. So in this week, you actually may learn how to make a website. Now, HTML, CSS, I don't consider that actual programming language, meaning there's no real logic as in, you know, as, as there is in Python. It's just a way to make your, you know, to format a website, format some content, um, style it, and then put it online. And for this week's homework, I made myself a personal website to showcase my CV and my personal projects. And I used that together with the CV in order to apply for jobs. Week nine, Flask. I actually really like Flask. It's basically a Python framework for running logic in the back end. So when you build an app, you have the website in the front uh, showing the user whatever information it is. And in the back, you have some Python code, you have a database, which you use to manipulate what content they see. This is actually the end of the course, meaning once you finish this week and you do the homework, you've actually learned everything there is to learn in CS50 and now you're, moved to, you're ready to move on to other courses. Week 10, emoji. Like I said, you don't actually learn anything in this week. You can just submit all the way up to week nine and then just do a final project, which could just be a variation of the app you already made for week nine and submit that in. And that's it. That's your final project. And you're done with the course. Congratulations. One note is that compared to last year, I've noticed that in 2023, CS50 has made the homeworks easier to digest. Before, the jump between the lecture and the homework was huge. You would have to really learn a lot of different things in order just to be able to complete the homeworks. So now they've made it so that there's a lab in between the lecture and the homework. So once you finish the lecture, you can work on the lab. And once you get to the homework, you don't feel as lost as how I felt last year. Tips and advice, make a commitment. If it is two hours a day, don't be on Facebook, don't be on WhatsApp, don't be watching videos, just focus on the course for two hours a day. Tip number two, if you need help, there's a ton of forums online that you can submit your code and people will comment on that code and will pretty much give you the answer without actually giving you the answer for you to copy off of someone else. Tip number three, if you're feeling a little bit tired and burnt out, stop coding, go outside, go for a break, then come back to the problem. There's nothing wrong with even taking a day off and coming the day after that refreshed. 